As a beginner in qualitative data analysis, you might have some challenges understanding the difference between codes and themes. In this video, I'm going to try and explain the difference between codes and themes in thematic analysis. My name is Bernard Mugo from Surviving Research. Now, before we understand the difference between codes and themes, it's important to understand the two main approaches to thematic analysis. The two main approaches to thematic analysis are an inductive approach that involves allowing the data to determine your themes. An example of a majorly inductive approach is the reflexive thematic analysis approach. The second approach is the deductive approach, which involves coming to the data with some preconceived themes you expect to find reflected. These themes might be based on theory or existing knowledge. So an example of a majorly deductive approach to thematic analysis is the code book approach. In thematic analysis, you can either do inductive or deductive approaches. In this video, we are looking at the difference between codes and themes in the inductive active approach to thematic analysis such as the reflexive thematic analysis approach. The reflexive thematic analysis approach was popularized by Brown and Clark. Now, I have previously made an in-depth video of the reflexive thematic analysis process to so check the link in the description. Let me use an analogy to explain the difference between codes and themes in the inductive approach to thematic analysis such as the reflexive thematic analysis approach. So consider a brick wall. The bricks will make up the whole wall. So the bricks are the codes and the brick wall is the themes. That means the codes contribute to the formation of the theme. And the patterns that the codes form will be the patterns that contribute to the emergence of a theme. So our themes emerge from our codes. In the inductive approach to thematic analysis, such as the reflexive thematic analysis approach, we begin with coming up with the codes, which is coding so that the codes will inform the emergence of our themes. So the codes are the bricks and the themes is the brick wall. So the pattern and relationship between the different codes is what we categorize as themes. The definition of codes is therefore that codes are the fundamental building blocks of what will later become themes. In this regard, codes are succinct, shorthand, descriptive, or interpretive labels for pieces of information that may be of relevance to the research questions. Codes should be brief, but offer sufficient detail to be able to stand alone. Codes should therefore inform the underlying commonality among the constituent data items in relation to the subject of research. When conducting qualitative data analysis, a researcher should work systematically through the entire data set, attending to each data item with equal consideration to come up with codes. Let's look at an example of how to develop codes. The example of a study that I will look at will be the experiences of people with digestive disorders and how they cope with their condition. The study has two research questions. What are the experiences of people with digestive disorders and how do people with digestive disorders cope with their condition? So I have my two interview transcripts here, which I have dragged and dropped in here. Then I double click one of them and let's develop some codes here and then also develop some themes as an example. So let's look at the first interview transcript. This interview transcript is attributed to Sam. First I is the interviewer S is for Sam. How old were you when you first realized you have something? celiac or I should clarify do you have celiac or is it a variation some and I'll clarify too yeah absolutely a few things I do energy healing and um, as well like um, counseling of people like with diseases of this nature so because of that I also go to medical doctors or energy healers and nutritionists or people more of of, of the beaten path, acupuncturists, things like that. So, for example, that statement shows that this interviewee utilizes alternative medicine. So we go to codes and I can drag and drop the codes here in this section. What we found here is that this interviewee relies on alternative medicine. Utilizes alternative medicine can be our code or we can also say utilizes alternative medicine to manage condition. But let's just leave it as a shorthand or a short and descriptive label. So utilizes alternative medicine is one of our first code. Let me interrupt this video for a minute and inform you of my services. My first type of service that I offer is consulting for anything related to qualitative data analysis using NVIVO. You hop on a video call with me through Microsoft Teams or Zoom and I will help you become a pro with NVIVO in a few hours. I also provide 
a done for you data analysis service. I do the manual coding and provide a data analysis report with the necessary visuals. Some kind of visuals I do include tables, hierarchy charts, and the framework matrix. Email or message me right now, details in the description. Let's continue coding. As we have described earlier, codes are shorthand, interpretative or descriptive label. You can see, for example, for this section, I coded that as utilizes alternative medicine. So this is an interpretative label of these statements provided by the interviewee. Now let's look at the second statement here. And because of that, these doctors are hesitant to specifically name anything because once you put a label on it, you give it power. You give it a consciousness and the more you, the more that consciousness is spread out, spread around like ADHD, and all of that first came out. It gives a negative connotation. So I was never told celiac. I was never told, the only thing I was ever told was in early stages was candida and parasites. And candida is a form of a parasite. Um, and other than that, they don't address it to me and I don't really ask. I've, I've asked, slipped up and asked in the past, but the doctors don't worry about it because then I'll start to research it and buy into the symptoms. Like in this whole section, we can see avoidance of labeling. Both the doctors and also the patient do not like giving a label to their condition. So we can call this or we can code this as avoiding labeling condition. So that's the next code that we have developed. And then let's move on. The interviewee, why do you think that is, aside from not wanting to promote, for lack of a better term, hysteria, why do you think doctors are so reluctant to label? Um, I think medical doctors is because of the lawsuits, perhaps in the liability, they don't want to arm, but, but the alternative doctors I go to, which are, I mean, they are also chiropractors, so they are doctors. Um, for one reason, I just mentioned, so my consciousness doesn't buy into it and create more of the disease within the body, which I, which I, we all kind of tend to do anyway. So we can see like this statement emphasizes the reason why the patient or the interviewee doesn't like to label their condition. We can drag and drop that as a code, more information under the code, avoiding labeling. If we double click here under the code, we will find two excerpts now that collaborate or that provide more strength to that code. And you can see the references now are two here, but it's the same participant. So when you're coding, it's not like all the time that you'll develop new code. No, sometimes you find more information to support an already established code. So let's continue coding. Then Sam, who is the interviewee, says, if you went through my symptoms, you would say, you would say celiac. You would say there is a lot of stuff. I just saw something on Facebook. I'm a medical doctor. I don't know. I was trying to find it for you. I don't know whose page it was because I have so many fan pages. It was a medical doctor that said what I used to when I was practicing medicine, my patients would come to me and they had all these symptoms, which is fatigue, chronic failure, like um, diarrhea, chronic diarrhea, and um, you know, chronic stomach pains, intestinal pain, and things like that. Vision problems like floaters, and um, I forgot what else she said in the list, but it's like, oh, that's all me. I want to code all this because the interviewee says, oh, that's all me. So this is a description of their symptoms, right? So these are dilabitating symptoms or symptoms that cause some negative side effects on the patients, dilabidating symptoms, this. My body needs, you know, and it wasn't related to anything that food-wise or medical-wise, it was related to lifestyle choice. So we can see that lifestyle choices contribute to digestive disorders. So that's another code that we have developed. Lifestyle choices contribute to digestive disorder. That's an observation, that's an interpretation we made from those statements. So let's go back and see, like here we can see the interviewee was given a very restricted diet by their doctor. So we can code this, no gluten, no dairy, no caffeine, all this. We can call it a restricted, restricted diet, okay? Restricted diet as a code. So here are some codes that we have developed from one of our interviewees. So we have this code. Now let's define themes. Themes are simply a combination of different codes according to shared meanings. So after we have developed codes, we go back to our data and try to look for shared meanings between the codes. We then categorize all the codes that have shared meanings into a singular theme. Let's look at an example of how to come up with themes from the example of codes that we developed earlier in the video. The first thing that we do in the 
the inductive approach to thematic analysis. For example, the reflexive thematic analysis approach is come up with codes. Then to develop themes, which is our second step, we have to look for patterns of meanings or related meanings between the code to develop themes. And then we drag or we categorize the codes under those themes. So let's look at our different codes here. Let me close these two areas. And remember, our two research questions which will play a significant role in helping to come up with our themes are what are the experiences of people with digestive disorders and how do people with digestive disorders cope with their condition? And we want to develop some themes which will categorize different codes. So utilizes alternative medicine. Is that an experience or a coping mechanism? Utilizes alternative medicine. Avoiding labeling the condition. Dilabidating symptoms. Lifestyle choices contribute to digestive disorders, restricted diet. So evidently here, I have two themes that I can come up with. The first thing I do is right click in the codes area. Remember we are in the codes area and establish a new code. And let's call this experiences. And this will not be a code. This will be a theme. So experiences. So we can call these experiences of people with digestive disorders. Click OK. Experiences of people with digestive disorders. So that's one of the themes that we've developed depending or we've got this theme from the codes. Utilizes alternative medicine. That's an experience. We drag and drop it into our theme. Avoiding labeling condition. That's not an experience. That's a coping strategy. We will get to that theme later. Or we can develop another theme and call it coping strategies of people with digestive disorders. Remember, our themes emerge from our codes and our themes are significantly influenced by our research question. That is what we want to find in our interview transcripts, okay? So we have experiences of people with digestive disorders and coping strategies. We know those two are themes. Avoiding labeling the condition, that's a coping strategy of people with digestive disorders. Dilabitating symptoms, that's an experience, of course. Lifestyle choices contribute to digestive disorders. That's an experience. Restricted diet, that's an experience. So we have these two themes and we have the codes under them. If we click the plus sign, you'll see the codes under each theme. Now, in Envivo 14, which we are using here, you can right click and go to the function of aggregate coding from children. What that does is it aggregates all the codes under each theme. So you can see the number of references and number of files. So let's right click and also aggregate coding from children on this place and see files. Files are the number of participants. Remember, for this example, I just coded one interview trans. So you also have, also we have one participant who provided five references or five areas in which experiences of people with digestive disorders are mentioned and two areas in which coping strategies of people with digestive disorders are mentioned. We can see that we came up with the codes and the pattern or the similar patterns in meanings between the codes are what determined our theme. And we put the themes up and then we dragged and dropped the codes under the theme and then we aggregated. So we have this good structure of theme, codes, theme, and these are the different codes. The first thing we do is come up with the codes and then we find similar or related meanings in the codes to come up with the themes and that's what we've done. So thank you for watching and that's how we come up with codes and themes in the inductive approach to thematic analysis such as the reflexive thematic analysis approach. Remember, I provide done for you data analysis services and consulting services for any problem or challenge related to NVivo. So check the link and email in the description and talk to me right away. Thank you.